delighted, um, very conscious of the responsibility that Synod has uh, put on the House of Bishops to deliver what we promised to deliver in terms of the flourishing of the whole church, but absolutely delighted that we reached this stage and um, grateful to God and grateful for the answered prayers that have brought us here in a debate that was full of charity and grace. And I think the presence of Jesus Christ was there throughout. Uh, and just to say that um, my colleague, Ron Williams, and people may want to forget him, but actually he's a lot of effort. And also we failed at the last card of the House of Laity. Nevertheless, uh, he too probably would feel that all that effort when he was Archbishop has been on. I want to echo what the Archbishop of York says about uh, Archbishop Rome, and also look back to what Archbishop George Carey did, um, because that the first step of ordaining women as priests over 20 years ago was a very, very major step, and it was at the time difficult and traumatic, and George Carey did that. Rowan Williams, I texted him after the result and said how much we knew that his work had contributed to it. So I'd want to echo, echo very much what the Archbishop of York has said about that. There is a hugely positive mood, and that is what we will go away and quietly and prayerfully give thanks for and delight in this evening, conscious of the hand of Jesus Christ in all that we do. There are areas where this will have in, improved very significantly our ecumenical relationships with many of the Lutheran churches of Northern Europe, with the Methodists, uh, with many of the Pentecostal churches, black Pentecostal churches. Uh, there's a huge long list where people will be really very, very pleased. There'll be a significant improvement in relationships and they'll feel we've taken a step towards catching up. Um, with Rome, we discuss this at great length. It's something they've been very well aware of. They're not going to wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh my goodness, have you seen what the Church of England has done? And in Uganda, if you are an American, you are an American. You never had this churchmanship stuff. It's only here, really, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and even within the evangelical uh, camp, the shades of evangelicalism. There are those who are evangelicals and they'll see themselves as actually believing in the doctrine of scripture, you know, source of truth, really, that's what matters. And, and they preach the same gospel and they do not want to go into this question of headship at all. This, and, and they will say themselves as conservative evangelicals. But there's a group that don't actually buy that bit of it and they feel we're changing the tradition and the only way you can do it is to ensure that um, you don't lose a member of your family because of a particular interpretation. I mean the truth of the matter is this, that um, the traditional Catholics have yeah. got uh, provincial Episcopal visitors. Mm. They're still there, they are going to remain, they're going to yeah. okay. Now, so the, the, the traditional Catholics can actually see what we've done with them over the last few years. They've actually had these provincial episcopal visitors. The promise that has been made that there will be uh, a headship evangelical in the college of bishops in order that some of their concerns, some of their views would actually be shared within the rest of the college. And, and once, you know, I, I, I've rather been a church where Everybody who's consecrated as a, as a bishop will be a bishop. There's no second hand, second yes. citizens whatsoever. Yes. Uh, and you know, those first, second, and third principles. And everybody has got to recognize that they're bishops. Mm -hmm. But when you have still uh, in a family and you want to work together with everybody else, I just hope that the church will be wiser, just like anybody else in a family, that if there's somebody who's a vegetarian, you don't automatically one night say, everybody must eat meat. Otherwise, you're not part of this family. You don't do that. You actually make arrangements uh, to create a diet in which they can thrive. And you're trying to create that kind of a diet. But without actually saying, these are not members of our family. Mm -hmm. We're all part of the same family, albeit there's some areas over which their theology may not be my theology, their understanding may not be. What I care about is that they should become disciples of Jesus, follow Christ, love him, and care for one another. 
I was probably in a minority. When the measure went down, I wasn't disappointed. I did not believe that legislation delivered all that we hoped we could get. So what went down was not commitment whether women should become bishops, and I actually said this uh, on, um, on, the, on that particular morning on um, the budget program. My disappointment was that we didn't succeed in getting better legislation because, if you remember, for those who are opposed, it didn't give them the kind of assurance now that this new measure has done. And secondly, we still hadn't produced a photo practice which was going to be a statutory legislation, which means that we could probably have spent two years arguing about what should go in that statutory instrument. Uh, so if I wasn't sure about the measure and I was opposed, I want to put all the kitchen sink in that measure. Uh, and when you do it that way, probably it could be there two years actually not resolving the code of practice. The measure has passed, uh, it's been promulged, but actually you can't do it because you have still have a code of practice. And the other thing which worried me, if there were disputes uh, between a parish, let's say, and a bishop, and the bishop did not behave in a way he should have behaved, it was subject for judicial review. Me as a Christian believe that actually Christians should try and resolve their things internally. So we now got a mechanism which is put within the church, just like we get in the clergy discipline measure. So I, I just felt there were elements there that I didn't think actually carried it all. Uh, I feel very similarly, very relieved that we've got a structure that is much easier to work with, that commits us to principles and not to having to work through endless legal agreements but to acting rightly and graciously and lovingly in principle. And I think the way that Jesus leads the church and, is, and uh, taught was much more in that way than setting down detailed codes of law. And that that is where we're acting in a much more Christ-like way and seeking to do it in this way. England doctrine is very clear that um, marriage is in a man and woman and a statement by the House of Bishops in terms of guidance still wants to uphold that doctrine of marriage as far as office holders within the life of the church because if you're a bishop or a priest or a deacon, uh, you've got to actually exemplify in your life the actual teaching of the church. And that's what bishops are for. So you couldn't go against the guidance, you couldn't go against the doctrine. Um, and what is important at the moment, we're going to be having two years of conversation um, to see where that actually does lead. But at the moment, I think the doctrine of the Church of England about marriage between man and woman hasn't changed according to Canon V30. And it is still, by the way, people may not know this, in the marriage act of same sex couples, the doctrine of the Church of England is entrenched in that particular act. We just got the definitions of marriage at the moment. It's still there, it still says it. And that's why it is illegal for anybody to conduct same-sex marriage in the Church of England Church.